five minute meetup. This is a five minute video I do on Fridays as opposed to my longer form videos on Tuesdays. And today is another installment of Debut Diaries. This is a series that I started to give you a little bit more insight into my experience of being a debut author, my debut novel, currently entitled but codenamed hashtag black witches book is coming out from simon pulse in 2021 you can see all the info about it below and so that's what i'm talking about and you can see any of the other debut diaries videos over here so today i wanted to talk a bit about my contracting experience so the contract essentially what your agent negotiates on your behalf with the publisher is all the terms of your book deal which can be a little bit nerve-wracking <laughs> but it's exciting to see everything some of the things that i up front was worried about i was worried about a morality clause so i'd heard some authors talking about their publisher having certain morality clauses so for example if there's something that comes out, for example, the author has done something morally unsound, the publisher can drop all their books essentially and cancel without any fault and not without any consequence on their end. I was a little bit worried about that because there were some authors that were concerned about that being used uh, against them if they spoke out about social justice issues. And I won't say that I'm like a huge social justice warrior, but sometimes I do speak up about things that are happening in the industry, especially when it comes to people of color, black authors, etc. And I was concerned about if a morality clause being put in would mean that I wouldn't be able to speak up and speak out because I could lose my book over that. So that was kind of like a little bit of a concern for me going into it. And then I was also concerned about joint accounting versus separate accounting. So the difference about this is, for example, if you have a multiple book deals, which I do, I have two book deal. So with joint accounting, you, in order to start earning royalties, you have to earn out the entire advance for both books before you start earning royalties versus in separate accounting each book is its own entity so your advance is split between the two books and when you earn out a certain amount for one book then you can start earning royalties potentially before your second book is even out you don't have to wait to earn out the full advance you just earn out the portion of the advance for one book versus the other and i really wanted that because it would have increased my chances of earning out and for a lot of people in a series your first book will do a lot better than your second book and so you have a lot higher chance of earning out with your first book than you do with your second book so i wanted to kind of give myself the best possible chance of earning out because then i would have a really good sales record and that would help me in selling books in the future so that was something I was concerned about going in and I was also concerned about if there were going to be any clauses or anything in which I would have to give back my advance to the publisher that wouldn't be within my control so for example like if I don't do any of the work I would expect that I would probably have to give back money and I don't expect that I wouldn't be doing the work of course I would do the work I want to see my book come out but I was worried about like if there was some magical clause in there where the publisher could decide they didn't want to publish the book and then suddenly I would be on hand for giving them back a chunk of money, which I know <laughs> currently in my life, I do not have the financial stability to just have a chunk of money sitting that I can throw back to a publisher. So those are the things that going into the contract I was concerned about. And it was really good because my agent, who's of course the contracting expert, um, my boyfriend is a lawyer, but he works in a completely different area of law. Law is so widespread. And so he couldn't look at the contract and know a bunch of things. And it's not his job anyway. It is really your agent's job to help you out with those terms. And Christy was wonderful. It was so easy to ask her, what does this mean? And what does this mean? And does this mean I have to give back money? And so going through the contract, it was really great for me. I did get separate accounting so I can earn out each book individually. Uh, there wasn't any morality clause for me. Um, for some people, it does show up in their contracts. It wasn't in my contract, which I was thankful about. And then my agent helped me understand the terms in which I would owe back advance money, which in my situation was really only if I didn't do the work or if I did the work unsatisfactorily. 
So that was fine with me. I expected that I would do the work well, <laughs> fingers crossed. So I wasn't worried about that. Really, the only cases in which things were a bit fuzzy were things like if the publisher went bankrupt or if the book was canceled. But in those cases, I wouldn't have to give back anything I had already been given. So then it was really good. I was overall very, very happy with my contract. A couple things that I wasn't really aware of were in contracts before I kind of got my contract and started learning more about other people's contracts was, for example, the no obligation to publish clause. So this means essentially that your publisher doesn't have to publish your book if they don't want to, and that's fine. They can just decide to do that. They can't recoup money that they've already given you for work you've already done, but they don't have to pay you any more money and they don't have to publish your book. Um, something else was bonuses. So I thought this was just a thing that smaller publishers did, but larger publishers also do this. And I didn't know that before kind of getting into the nitty gritty of contracts. So for example, uh, you can get bonuses for earning out a book in the first year of its release. You can get bonuses for hitting the New York Times list. You can get bonuses for winning awards and the bonuses money. <laughs> I was just thinking in my head, I was like, are people wondering what the bonus is and the bonus is money, giving you extra money for doing well, essentially, and selling your book, which is kind of fun because you were gonna try and do those things anyway, and now you're just getting extra money for doing them, so that's great. And then finally, the non-compete clause was something I wanted to look into because I wanted to know what else we could potentially publish in the same year that my other books are being published. This is just important for selling. Like if you wanna have multiple books come out in a year, you have to be familiar with your non-compete clause, which can range. It can say you have to, you cannot publish any book during the same year that your book is being published by your publisher without their permission. It can say you can't be publishing any book within your age category. It can say you can't be publishing any book that's in the children's broader spectrum. It all depends on your publisher. And that's kind of the quick and dirty of my experience as a debut author getting my contract. It was great because my agent did all the negotiating stuff. That's the wonderful thing about having a literary agent. <laughs> so I was just there in the final stage to be like, what does this mean? And what does this mean? And what does this mean? And she did all of the hard work bit. And for me, it took me four months to get my contract. So from my offer to when I got the contract to read over it took four months. And it really depends on your publisher. Some publishers will do a contract really fast. Some publishers will have to take a bit more time. My publisher was also moving while my contract was happening. And so it was a lot going on. So it took a bit longer. And after you get your contract, then you get to announce, which was really the only reason I was impatient about my contract. Also until you get your contract, you also don't get paid. So that was also something that made me impatient about it. But it came and everything was wonderful. So that was great. And that was my whole contracting experience. Um, if you have any questions about contracts, please feel free to comment in the description. I likely won't say specifically what, my, what was in my contract necessarily, but I can let you know about contracts in general. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe below. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.